your thought about pre-rolls is very interesting in that I think there should be some experiments done to, to work out whether yeah, it does like it, or does not it, help. Like, let's say I want to watch a stream, right? And so, okay, we go to the Twitch TV. Let's see who's streaming. Oh, this guy's streaming. I wonder what he's up to. Okay, click a stream. Fucking 30 yeah. second ad. Fuck it. You just exit out. Like, fuck, I'm not going to fucking watch it. I'm going to go to another stream. No, no, just, no. I, I, I hear you. I absolutely It's just like it's so annoying to deal with pay rules. Yeah, it's the same when uh, we have a company called ITV in the UK, which is um, uh, live, you know, terrestrial TV. But if you watch it online, uh, mm -hmm. They haven't found a way of monetizing it other than running three pre rolls before you oh, get to the show. Jesus. Nice. So, you know, you have to wait through sometimes. It's maybe a minute and a half before you actually get to see what's on. But at least they've got a good program system that you can kind of go, yeah, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch that. Okay, well, okay I won't even tune MLG, in. MLG um, already. Uh, and I feel like a direct. Sorry, Cuddy. I, I feel like a directory would be much better um, with, you know, here's what's on. And allows you mini previews in tiny little, you know, 180 by 120 boxes or something, um, sure. so that you can kind of avoid that whole. Ah, oh, I'll go and check out this new streamer. Yeah, he seems pretty good. Fuck, I've got a pre-roll. Fuck it, I won't bother. Because <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. Also, pre pre-rolls completely deprive a streamer and a viewer of the streamer controlling when the advertisements are seen as well. Like, when I'm doing a stream, I can control when I want to run ads. Okay, alright, we I'm doing yep. some funny shit, I ended again, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got a three-minute ad going on. I'll try not to say anything, do anything funny. Run the three-minute ad and just chill. Sure. But with a pre-roll, I have no control over. I, maybe, like, maybe something really funny is going on and somebody wants to come and check out my stream, and now they're hit with that 30-second ad the second it happens, and, like, I can't stop that, you know? I don't know, I just, I really hate everything about pre-rolls. So but. this UK company, it doesn't make you disable ad block. It will just still deliver straight through. Yeah, still that's does. Sick. Yeah, it goes straight through it. Yeah, and I'm not going to tell you who it is either because I think if I told you, I think Twitch would be straight over there and start to do it. <laughs> well, what's funny is, <laughs> but they'll Twitch, find it. Twitch... There's no doubt about it. They'll find a way. I swear to God, there's some there's some really smart people at Twitch, and they will find a way. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and there's some smart people at ad block. So like I said, it would just be a tennis game of backwards and forwards. And it's, it's there'll be a moment like when we all come on in a few weeks from now, where we all go, "Oh my God, you can't do, you can't use ad block anymore." Oh my God, it's the end of the world. It's the end of Twitch. Oh my God. And then a couple of weeks will go by, and we'll be all like, "Yeah, ad block's back. It works." It's and like an arms race, basically. Yeah, it will be. It's, it'll be an arms race. It's like hackers, uh, and I would love so. to find a solution to that. That. You know, stops people using ad block, but makes the ads less intrusive or you know less offensive like that when you're trying to th flick through channels, um, where you know Twitch can earn money, streamers can earn money, and we don't have to use ad block. And I think that would be you know well, utopian. Well, what's perhaps. funny? Well, what's funny with Twitch is that you know that the checkbox for pre rolls used to be in the user interface in settings. Yeah, and I don't think I it, don't see it anymore. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's not there look, anymore. There, there's okay. I just had a look. There's some people still with the legacy dashboard, I believe. Like I think TV still has the legacy. I dashboard. don't know if that's true. I mean, I would have it, wouldn't I? Unless they. I like, remember TV in, in that in that people. SoundCloud soundbite mentioned that he still had some legacy UI that he could still use and uncheck that box. But I don't. Yeah, yeah, I I did before as well. I know that newer ones weren't weren't the same as my dashboard. Just talking to a few other streamers, but now looking you, you at have mine, the new one now. Okay. I have yeah. I don't have any access to kind they of. They rolled it out to everybody then. Yeah, that's a little. That's kind of too bad. Um, but I think we also have to just you know use a pinch of reality and remember five years ago we weren't even able to stream on on live <laughs> video because uh, the cost of bandwidth was just too high. So sure, sure. And let's not forget where we came from. I guess. Fuck. God, man. Walking <laughs> in the snow. You're going to be telling us about walking in the snow soon. I know, here, it's man. ridiculous. It's like crazy. Well, pa, that's a really fallacious argument. Calm down on that. Yeah, I know that we're a lot farther along we are now four years ago, but you can't use that to excuse poor behavior. That would be similar no, to no, what the no, ISS no, 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 say now. No, 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 well, 10 that's... years ago, you were on dial-up. It's okay that I'm getting a shitty internet now because let's, we're way better. Let's, I mean... be, let's be clear. I didn't say that. Yeah. I didn't say excuse that. I said that. Okay, okay. It's just, let's just remember where we came from and the fact that it's great that we have this system in place. Yeah, can sure. it be better? Absolutely, it can be better. Can it be better for Twitch? Sure, I'm pretty sure it could be better for them too. But it could also be better for the streamers, and it could also be better for the viewers. All, all, no argument from me on that at all. Sure, sure. But I still remember the day I had to pay £16,000 for some bandwidth for a weekend's oh, worth yeah. of tournament Holy just to stream shit. to 13,000 people for a weekend. So, you know, it still burns for me. <laughs> okay, let's take a sub call in. Guys, if uh, you're subscribers, you want to call in, Go ahead and message uh, words G G W R Z G G, and he'll help you arrange and calling in and asking us a question live. So we got Joe, who's uh, kind of a regular with Collins, going to be asking oh. a question here. Let me fix the windows here. Uh, hello. What's up, Joe? 
Hey. Hey guys. Um, hey. so I'm an aspiring uh, esports writer. Um, and my so my question is mostly for Cody, but anyone that wants to give some input, uh, awesome. Um, so I, I mostly write about StarCraft, like that's the game I like, and I also write about um, like like the larger games industry, but but or the larger esports industry. But I don't really write about like content specific to other games. And I'm wondering how important you think that is to like diversify away from just StarCraft and the greater esports industry. Like, is it really important to be able to to write about LOL, to be able to write about Dota, to be able to write about CS:GO? Right. Uh, I think you'll always deliver subpar work if you're doing if you're writing about things you don't necessarily care about. Uh, uh, in terms of breaking out, do you write anywhere currently? Like, where 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 is your content published? Uh, I write on Esports Seven. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, uh, so you're already this, in good hands. It's Joe Edwards, Cody. He didn't know. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Did I, this guy say his name was Joe? Yeah, he's <laughs> Joe. Joe. No, I, 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 I think he is. On the scene? <laughs> I wish I was Joe Edwards, but sadly uh, I'm not. Yeah, so you're already in good hands. Uh, I mean, uh, to, if I can be absolutely honest, uh, in the the next year, year and a half, uh, especially after the release of Legacy of the Void, I think it would really behoove you to see if there might be anything else that interests you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Esports 7, you're, you're absolutely already in good hands, and as long as your editors are pleased with your content, as long as you're pleased with your content, uh, you're good to go. Do you typically do features or just news? Um, features. Like I wrote, if you guys read the thing on premium content that was out Ah, uh, yes, I read that yesterday, mm. yeah. yeah. So that was mm -hmm. very good. Yeah, so... One of the things that I had to learn really early as a, like an esports writer is it's not uh, your editors will come to you and they'll you know they want this story written or that story written and you have to stop looking at these things like tasks that your editors or bosses hand down to you and just be interested in telling stories because people like hearing stories so it's no when you do an article it's no different than hanging out at a bar with your friend and telling a story except you're telling it to you know uh, how many thousands of strangers there are so uh do starcraft content until your manager taps you and say hey man these numbers are getting a little low um and he should likely give you enough heads up in advance that you should know that you should be looking elsewhere and i guarantee you there's other stuff out there that would interest you no matter what um and one of the things that will never disappear is esports politics for sure so the fact that you're already interested in that is good and i have one uh, quick thing to ask if you have time yep go for it uh, um I've noticed that, like, if I write something about esports politics, it'll stick on StarCraft. <laughs> it doesn't really stick anywhere else. Is it just because we're, like, no one plays the game, everyone just watches it? Why, why is that? No, I think it's really, it's actually very interesting. Uh, so when Richard submits stuff, he'll oftentimes submit it across the subreddits, or he'll have, like, you know, one of his friends submit it, or he'll wait for people to submit it. But either way, the article will get up on multiple subreddits. StarCraft 2 tends to be a savvier audience. In Richard's yeah. AMA, he even said that. Mm -hmm. StarCraft is a savvier audience. The numbers are decreasing, but for whatever reason, uh, maybe they're older. Uh, they just seem just to think, be sort of more clued in. I just um, think the community has just been more developed than some of the other games over time. Yeah, it's a mixture of, I think it's a mixture of all those things. I think yeah. it's, it's the Brood War Legacy. It's the... Yeah. Uh, type of people that play the game on a religious basis seem to be, I don't want to say have a hierarchy or an average hierarchy, but they, they generally seem more interested in a much wider range of subjects, such as politics, for instance. Uh, you only have to go on to Liquid, uh, Team Liquid to, to you know look at the off-topic subjects that come up, and some of them are some very, very in-depth uh, conversations about metaphysics and you know trips to Mars and... <laughs> Uh, football and it's a real wide range of subjects that you know sometimes you just kind of sit there and just go why the hell is this on a gaming <laughs> site this is bizarre uh, think... but generally speaking the, there is that and there is the aspect of I think there are um, a higher proportion of maturer gamers uh, in Starcraft and that doesn't degrade other, other scenes but you know League of Legends I think has a much lower average age range and therefore you know it's uh, it's, it's, it's a slightly different feel when you go on that subreddit as well and different things do better on StarCraft that wouldn't necessarily do well on LoL. I don't know if I necessarily buy into the idea that the StarCraft 2 community is much more mature than anyone else. I mean, maybe, but I, I, I don't believe that. I, I, I've, I've, mature, I've been through a ton of different communities, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've never found one more, more mature than I have in StarCraft. And yeah, sure, it has its, its idiots and its, its morons, but it seems to have less to me than almost any other community I've ever been involved in. 
Maybe. I think I do think there's a big deal about the um, how many people play, though. I find that there's very little traction gained in the StarCraft subreddit. Like, how many people post, like, videos of, like, funny plays or shit that happens or, like, anything relating to, like, strategy or builds. It's very, 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 very rare to ever find that on the StarCraft subreddit these days. Um, looking through, like, the top 25, I wonder how many of these are even related at all to gameplay. Whereas on League, you'll often find, like, a funny video of some guy like evading like a sick gank or you know some Italy spear that manages to hit a dude like funny shit like that like it seems like those are it's really rare to find much gameplay related stuff on the Starcraft subreddit and I think I think that might tie into the um not many people play so much as just kind of read and watch I, I feel like there's a little bit of a connection there yeah no, I would possible. disagree with that I mean I, I watch way more than I play yeah mm, sure. same to me so all right Joe thanks for thanks guys buddy. cheers yep. man all right, let's go back. Let's do some more Reddit questions here. And if you guys, again, if you guys want to call in... Oh, hold on a second. Dude, that's not cool. Uh, what happened? Guy in, the, guy in the channel says Red Eye is mature. Look at his t-shirt. Look at his t-shirt. He's fucking yeah. animal, man. He's an animal. <laughs> he is an animal. He is an animal. You can oh, wait, be mature Odie. and have fun, too, you know. The two aren't mutually exclusive. <laughs> so Odie says, we're signing another Korean in StarCraft 2. That's all I can say. <laughs> next Odie few days did? announced. Yeah, Odie did. So I guess oh, Dignitas no. is going to be signing another Korean in the next few days. Okay, so let's wait, see. Wait, who? which team was it that said, we don't want any Koreans? That wasn't Dignitas. Who, who was it? <laughs> was it Dignitas? No. No, it was a. They just fanatic. kicked out. Um, fanatic. was it fanatic? Was it fanatic? Um, they they lost like a Korean. Or they kicked out a Korean player. Did they kick? Was it, I don't even know the fucking Hello name Kitty? was. Oh fuck. Hello Kitty or no? Hello no, Kitty no, no, NA, no 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 no. It was it was a it was a four. It was a European team. They kicked a really well known Korean who won like a WCS. Mouse. Mouse. Mouse just. Mouse. Mouse. Yeah, there we go. Mouse. And Mouse. They, they, didn't want they to obviously don't want player. Spanish people either because uh, <laughs> Vortex just yeah. left Mouse too. So. Um, okay. Yeah, it's Mouse. Yeah. All right. So anyways, yeah, look for that, Dignitas. Okay, let's see, another question here. Let's see, Fear Dragon has a cool question. He's got, um, where is it? I just had it, I just lost it. It's a great question. Right, where is it? Fucked up. Yeah, seriously, let me search for this thing. It was like, here it is, question for all. Do you all, any of you have a dream project you've been wanting to do but just haven't had the time, resources to do it? But still want at some point huh. in the future. Okay. Any of you guys have a dream project you want to do? Paul yeah. looks like he does. Yeah, no, I, I've had one actually since about 2005. Yeah. Um, which I'm still working on right now. <laughs> Not right this minute, but I have been working it in the last uh, couple of weeks again. Um, and it's... Um, it's not new these days, but back in 2005, we had we had nothing, and um, I basically wrote from hand in PHP and SQL. Um, uh, we call it the world rankings, but that was more because GGL needed a world oh, ranking. Where's John? Thing. When we need John. Okay. Yeah, uh, John knows all about this. Um, but basically, my idea was more a database of results that would be solid enough to be able to last the test of time. Because back in 2005, we were already losing stuff that w would happen in, in 95 and 96 and 97. Yeah. And the kind of tournaments just got lost. I mean, you know, I'm sure if I ask chat right now who won Deathmatch 95, I don't know if anyone would be able to tell me. And I'm not sure you'd be able to find it on the Internet now. It, it, that one might be out there. But the, there are many, many hundreds of others that just will not be out there anymore. Right. And I personally think that's a legacy that we need to preserve. So I started something in 2005, which, is, as I said, I'm starting to resurrect right now, which is literally a results database for every player and every team that has ever played in any esports tournaments. And it's a massive undertaking. Um, yes, we have things, fantastic resources like Liquipedia and, and Dota has it as well, and League also with Leaguepedia. Um, and they're great. They're, they're absolutely preserving what we've got now. My interest is more historical on, you know, what did Thresh win in his career? How many tournaments did he win? How much money did he win? What tournaments did he turn up and play at? Um, the answer is 12, and he won all 12, by the way. But besides that, I, I want to be able to kind of preserve that 95 to 2007-ish era because we just don't have anything left now. Gottfrag was the closest we have. Um, as far as I know, I don't know if Scoot's managed to get all of it back from MLG, but it's it's gone, and yeah, we don't have that gone, anymore. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's that for me is a real shame. I think we should try and protect that. So yeah, that's always been my my pet project that I wanted to get finished, and I just haven't had time. And I still don't have time to fully commit to it. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be my my dream one. 
It's manu- like you're manually entering in this archive, or, or... I was, yeah. Oh, and wow. I, I have about 680 Crazy. tournaments in there right now. Hmm. To go back from 95 to 2000. I guess there's no other easy way six, to actually. Seven. I mean, you could write an API, but it doesn't matter. You yeah, still, you but then you need an API it. for every game and every demo. You know, I mean, you, you don't do need a game. Stuff. You just need somebody to report the the results. Yeah, and that's, that's what it. Wikipedia is. You know, Wikis are great for that, but I, yeah. mine's more. You know, I wanted to try and make it a. Uh, you know, as flexible as a wiki can be, so that people can come along and go, "Hey, I just watched a tournament, and here's the results, and here's what the players." Oh, are, so you blah, want blah, it to blah, be blah. user, but user, then, but um, then, yeah, but then there's, you know, I don't know, an admin do. group that go, "Yeah, this is a load of crap. I don't know what this is." Or actually, yeah, let's verify that and enter it in. Oh, so it still okay. needs moderation of some kind, but yeah, oh, I see. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Stephen, any project that you wish you dream project? Um, not really. Not that I can think of. That's a pretty boring answer, but it's about I like streaming. Yeah, streaming. I'm playing my games. I mean, that's pretty much all I do. Yeah, he's he's, he's living like... the dream, man. Living yeah, the sure. Dream. Sure, why not? Cody. Uh yeah, I've had something that has somehow slipped my grasp for maybe the like the last six months or so. I'm a big fan of uh, NPR's This American Life, and I want to do like an audio only esports podcast, not like a talk show like mm. this, but like actually just chronicling. Uh, stories in esports, uh, just because I think it's really interesting. There's a lot of stories behind the scenes from like the most obscure folks. Uh, this topic was actually how Richard and uh, Richard Lewis and I became like not worst enemies. It's like I thought his story was just really interesting, and I'd like to do it. Uh, another one that I want to do is Conrad from Evil Geniuses because he's just like the most low key person. And there's tons of professional players too, but I just I think like an audio only podcast like sort of chronicling like these weird stories or maybe like a day in the life would be really interesting uh it's just one of those things that uh you know people's bosses don't want necessarily like their employees you know that sort of access to their employees or getting the audio equipment is just difficult in my own laziness yeah but that's sort of it's something i'd like to try and do this year mm-hmm. okay great yeah. uh let's see for me oh man um I don't know. Let's see. Project-wise, I guess if it could be anything, um, I don't know. I'd like to sit down and just um, spend some time educating myself and uh, uh, just producing some, even some music at some point. I think that would be really, really cool. I've never had the time or or just at all to even be able to sit down and do it, but I think I have somewhat of the ability to do it. <laughs> just the musicality to do it, so I, I'd, I'd like to at least be able to explore that, but I just don't have any time to do that, unfortunately. Let's see, anything else? Um, <laughs> here comes a Russell Jimmy one. Russell Jimmy time. <laughs> to Destiny. I haven't heard Stephen Russell. To Destiny, what are your thoughts to on Winter StarCraft overtaking you as the number one StarCraft stream on Twitch? Do you think you can <laughs> win the battle against Winter for top streamer, or is he just too damn good? Oh shit! I don't know. I mean, if I, I mean, like, if I do things like playing Watch Dogs and shit, it takes me off the StarCraft Two section entirely. So, if I'm playing other games, it'll never happen. You can just still put yourself in the StarCraft Two section. <laughs> Big old Richard gave you the fucking, you know, that huge pep talk, and then exactly. I mean, for all we might know, he might never be seen again. And this is how Uh-oh. you're gonna fucking. This is how you're gonna. You're gonna give him his, you know, his fucking farewell wish for you is just that you could. You could fucking beat Winter Starcraft, and you're gonna. Rip. <laughs> okay, De- Decamel asks, "What do you guys, mainly Destiny, think about the picture-in-picture system that Planetary Annihilation uses, and how it's used as a replacement of the standard minimap we've seen in traditional RTS games? Should more RTS games utilize it as a feature that either supplements or substitutes the minimap altogether?" I have no idea how that works. Yeah, I haven't played PA in a while, so I don't know what the camera camera looks like or the picture in picture. What are you okay? His follow up question is: What are the odds of you trying out PA again? Um, I'll probably play it again in the future. I will. I've been meaning to. I just haven't got around to it. <laughs> I vote kick. I can't even read that one. Uh, v car Cody. After seeing your tweet, I'd I'd like you to sing the Twelve Days of Clo- Clothmas song, or at least write out the lyrics. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping to cry. I'm sorry, Sid. The, the first lyric was on the first day of Clothmas my employer gave to me. No money. That was the first oh lyric. And then I was hoping that everyone else would chime in. We got through three. 
Really? Number you two was pretty close. Scoots. Scoots is probably, Scoots, probably one of them, right? This needs stretch no, goals. No, no. Yeah, yeah, we do yeah. need stretch goals. Yeah, we need right. stretch goals. <laughs> You get to if we get to the fifth day, I'll uh, you know do something. Yeah. Something golden, right? <laughs> if we yeah. if we get to if we get to twelve days, Richard Lewis will strip naked and come on the show, and reveal what? everything he knows ever about Sapinda. If we get to day twelve, his uh, the attempts on his life might get more serious than <laughs> they have ever been. Oh my so. god. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Maybe one or two more questions here. See, question for Red Eye: Are the plans to make WCS round of 32 offline as well in the near future, or maybe even Challenger League? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's definitely something we've talked about. Uh, we talked about it last year. Um, financially, just it, it's uh, it's very difficult to explain how challenging that is, technologically speaking and and organisationally speaking, because it really is challenging for 32 players to come in. Mainly because we can't just run it like a you know a short term event like we would an IEM over three or four days, but we actually have to, you know, it needs to be spaced out to be to be good, and then that can take uh, as the last one did. We did every Tuesday and Wednesday for two weeks. We also did two Saturdays as well. So it, it's over a period of maybe three or four weeks. So to bring all of those people in and out all the time with different hotels and flights, and it, it's a real challenge. It really is. I'm not going to kid you. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. um, but financially speaking, it is very, very expensive to do that as well. So I think it's unlikely, um, but it's definitely something that we talked about last year, and it's definitely something we, we revisited again this year. Um, and we would we would love to be able to do it at some point. I just I can't give you a a yes, we're going to do it, or a no, we won't do it. It's it's still it's still there. All right, cool. Okay, last one. Prey Monkey. He's got a question for Red Eye and Cody. While it sucks that e or Red Eye, while it sucks that ESGN went down, it opens up some room in the Hearthstone space for sustainable content. ESL is the king of sustainable esports. Any chance we could see some weekly Hearthstone content from ESL in the near future? Uh, again, <clears throat> uh, we've we've been discussing Hearthstone a lot internally. It's uh, you know it's a Blizzard game, so we have a really we have a you know, fantastic relationship with Blizzard in other games as well. Um, it's uh, undoubtedly growing. It's undoubtedly very popular in in, uh, uh, in streamers. You only have to look on you know streaming on Twitch to see how popular it is. So it's definitely something that's on our radar. Uh, we've also been re uh, jigging everything in terms of products. So um, hopefully we'll be able to announce something relatively soon. It's nothing to do with the demise of ESGN. Uh, we were looking at things well well before that, and we've just successfully had. Um, some Hearthstone in the US as well. So, yeah, you know, and ESL is every single week, guys. With ESL America, correct. Yep. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely on our radar, and that's that about all I can say right now. I know it's pretty filtered of me, but yeah, shoot me. I, you know, I've got a PR woman right now tuned in, monitoring everything I'm saying. Promise. And just put, you know, I promises, like, man. If I reveal anything, she'll kill me. There's a red dot. So, on yes, there scenes, will be guys. ESL. <laughs> content coming up in the near future. <laughs> Tran man translation right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Cody, he, uh, same Watch guy. Asks, yeah. So, how, how, uh, the, how the fuck you make money as an esports journalist? Are page views, ads really? Well, hold enough? on, hold on, hold on. I want to, I want to double oh. back to, uh, oh, like okay. they said, uh, NESL runs two tournaments weekly. Oh, yeah. National they ESL. Run a, they run a, yeah, so National ESL runs one on. It's now ESL America. ESL That's, America. Yeah, yeah. ESL to, America, sorry. Rebranding the ESL America, guys. I'm being uh, told either... by the brand woman. It's ESL America. That's it. And they either run one. It's like it's like Tuesday Sunday or, or Monday. Or Wednesday. Well, the they King of the Hill is on Tuesday, so yeah, the... Tuesday. No, but they, they, ran a, they used to run a middle of the week one too that didn't count. So Sunday, Sunday's the big one. Yeah, Sunday is the big one, one the that feeds for, yeah. into the yeah. King of the Hill. Yeah. 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 So you can you can earn Correct. money 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 in Sunday, and I think that's a $500 prize pool. Yes. I once placed one shy of the money, this is, by this the is way. Cody's anyone like, wants some, this is anyone want some, uh, some Evole Street cred? <laughs> this is, uh, let me dish it out real fast. But yeah, Sunday's the big one, and that seeds into the NHL King of the King Hill, Hill. Yeah. which is really right now the premier weekly thing in uh, what? Yeah, my opinion. What? Screw you, man. <laughs> I've well, I, I mean, Deck Wars, like, after I stopped playing because uh, I wasn't making any money, Deck Wars came out after the fact, but I, that's uh, Deck Wars isn't open, you know what I mean? Isn't it? It's well, not open. It's it's not open. It's okay, Chan, so it's it's Chan Man open. Yeah, this is some... This is a, okay, all right. All right, I'll give you that. It's the I'll premiere. I mean, like, if you really want to get your your feet wet in Hearthstone, I would recommend playing NESL. And then once you shred through that shit, you can get invited so to... 
uh, when, yeah, you can start playing in ESL America's Sunday Hearthstone <laughs> Cups, and then once you start shredding, you can get invited to Chan Man's sick Hearthstone Illuminati shit he runs oh on, uh, my on, on Thursdays after Value Town. But yeah, it's getting it's getting big. It's very reminiscent of the uh, the very early StarCraft days where there would be these weekly cups, and you sort of see these players yeah, there's get more, more consistent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's Zotac there's as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that next question. All right, next question. How the fuck do you make money as an esports journalist, Cody? Are are page views ads really enough? No. Uh, <laughs> the best thing you can do as an esports journalist is to work for companies who will figure that out for you, like I did at On Gamers and like I'm I'm doing now at Daily Dot. Uh, because uh, prior to working with EG, I ran my own website. I didn't break a ton of news, but I did enough, and I had pretty decent page views, and uh, it was very difficult to monetize. So your best bet right now is working with businessmen who understand business, and your best bet is being a journalist who understands journalism, because it is very, very difficult. Um, Video is better monetized than words are right now, uh, and that's just sort of the nature of the beast. Most of these companies, from my understanding, still aren't operating positively, uh, you know. Well, what you'll find, what you'll find is it takes just as much time marketing the content is making the content sometimes even more sometimes yeah so that's you really have to look at that and like Cody said if you work for an organization then you have some people that can do that for you and you can just do what you do best but if you want to do it yourself you got to learn how to market too and, and be ready to spend a lot of time on that yeah uh, I mean on gamers is doing it really really well uh, esports heaven is doing it really well daily dot it's not an esports publication uh, and that's actually one of the reasons why I like writing for them uh, but yeah, you need a, it's very difficult to do it by yourself. So I recommend figuring out a support system as early as possible. Um, and you know, just doing what you do best. That's how businesses tend to work. <laughs> I've got a, got a question for you, Cody. What do you think of the proliferation of esports news on other sites? I mean, daily dot being one of them, mm, but there's, there's lots. I mean, question. Forbes do it. USA today have done some. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I mean, does you know, it make so, your life easier? I mean, are you able to go and make some money off, you know, freelancing? Uh, so, I've I've never had the opportunity where like I've I've freelanced for multiple organizations. With Daily Dot right now, they have first right of refusal, so I'm not exclusive with them. Okay. But I've oh, okay. yet to be turned down for a story that I pitched to the Daily Dot. Um, you know, it's it's really interesting. There are certain folks who sort of you know will contribute to Forbes Forbes pretty regularly. They get yeah. shredded on pretty. Part by the the general esports community, but um, it's nice to know that those opportunities are there. One of the things that I you know, uh, well the so let's presume for example there's a regular contributor to Forbes that every esports journalist hates because he's regularly <laughs> impacts his reporting. In our who is that dude? every time every who is that? I don't know. I, it's a hypothetical thing, but every time you know he does an article. All of us journalists sort of like come together. We make like a Skype group and we spend like a, a 30 minute, you know, cathartic session of just talking a bunch of shit. But one of the interesting things is none of us have ever like, you know, reached out to Forbes and been like, hey, this is actually wildly inaccurate. Like, how about you give me a job? So I think it maybe is a good thing. I think it maybe is a good thing. And we should maybe, uh, we should maybe be a little more proactive in, in uh, what we do. But a lot of us are locked down. You know, Rob's is, or Rob. Yeah, sure. Uh, Rod, rather. But, I mean, what, what do you what do you think about it in general, though? Because you know, because I've seen stuff in the Guardian and in the Telegraph, which are quality papers in the UK. And I yeah. personally, yeah. I think that's great. We see esports in those mainstream newspapers. It's that's got to be awesome, right? Uh, I mean, I, some of it's very inaccurate, though. I have to say, you know, yeah. it's very much yes. like, you no, know, League of Legends, biggest game in the world. Well, is it okay? And then another one will go two days later, literally same newspaper, Call different writer. Call of Duty is the <laughs> biggest game in the world right yes, now, and you'll be exactly. like, what the fuck is this about? So I, that gets uh, a bit frustrating. Uh, but generally, it's got to be great. It's good for business in general, and business being good for esports, like esports business blossoming, is good for the mm. esports journalist, right? Because I need yeah. you guys to be doing well for people to pay me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah well, uh, it's, it's you, an ecosystem. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Just in the same way that like. You know, you want your tournament to be the absolute best in the world. Another tournament doing well isn't so bad. So other publications covering esports, even with sort of writers that you don't necessarily feel are as equipped as you are to cover this, uh, it's still probably pretty okay. Um, yeah. You know. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's gonna be it, guys, for today. Great show. I just, want to, uh, I just want to answer a quick question because there's one in the chat right now. Is that all right? Sure, go for it. 
Uh, so feed me, who's a bit of an asshole most of the time, <laughs> says, uh, why are WCS groups not done live? Don't you think fixing the groups ruins the integrity of the game? So let me answer oh, that boy. firstly. Okay. So the first thing is the groups are not fixed. That's, that's the first thing you need to know. They are actually drawn out. Uh, you know, you can believe me or not believe me. I can't really provide any proof that they are drawn properly, but they are. You just have to trust us that our integrity uh, is very important to us and we make sure that they're done properly. Should we do them live? Well, yeah, we probably should do them live. Could we do them live? Not always, unfortunately, and that's part of the problem. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Sometimes studios are available, sometimes they aren't, sometimes the people aren't available. It's very, very, very busy right now right. Uh, at ESL. Next week alone, we have five studios with two commentators in the minimum, all streaming at the same time. Wow. We've even upgraded our internet line to a thousand gig, because well, a thousand gig, a thousand, you know, one gig one lines, gig. On, one yeah. three yeah. one gig lines in a row, because we couldn't be able to cope with all the bandwidth we were going to push out. So, oh my God. Wow. you know, it's the ideal world that we always show them. Absolutely, I'm with you totally, Phoebe, and I would absolutely agree with what Todd said earlier on uh, this month about, you know, should we show them live? Yes, we should show them live because then there is no question that their integrity is called into question but you'll have to take my word for it they are drawn properly there are no fixing going on yeah it's just a tough situation to, to be in i think even todd it, it is todd gave you the uh the old one over uh saying that the you know the integrity you gotta you gotta wonder um uh and you guys haven't you know for better or worse haven't had any luck too there's a crazy it's like a one Korean per group and then one race per group too, I think, in the in one of the round of sixteens. It was it was last season. Okay. Oh, the entire I mean, group it's was just, the one yeah, of the races. Just how it comes yeah, I mean, we, we've got you know, we've ended up with two groups of three Protoss this time in the round of sixteen. Now if we were gonna fix it, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't guarantee one Protoss going through if we, we just could avoid it. Sure we just suffer, man. Uh, group A, for instance. Why Why the hell, if we were wanting you know, Europe to do better than Korea, why the yeah. hell would we put Harstam, Snoot, 4GG, and Vortex all in the same group? Why would we do that? That's insane. I mean, it's pretty obvious you do it just to make people think that you don't read the group. <laughs> meta, dude. Meta Serious off your meta. Oh, my God. We've got mind Serious fucks. Sick meta. mind games, dude. Yeah, yeah sick mind that. games. That's, that's brilliant, yeah. And then why would we put Wellmu, MC, Todd, and Yoda in the same group? Just, again, ridiculous. I mean, the groups are crazy. All four groups are crazy for the round of 16. Uh, and as I said, you know, you can choose to believe me or not believe me, but I, I don't have any particular reason to lie. I'm not in the League Ops team, and, you know, I can all I can do is just refer back to you that, you know, we always do the draws, and <sighs> that's, yeah, that's how they came out. Exactly. Yeah, that's how they come out. I mean, you know, do, should we do them live? Yeah, I, I want to do them live, and I want to do them more often live. Um, but it's not always possible, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, let's I'm wrap, I'm done. Let's wrap the show. And it's always a pleasure having you on, Paul. It's always a good time. We always have some great discussions. We always have technical technical issues. Yeah, yeah. It's really good, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, great time. You want to do some shout-outs, thank yous? Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, sure, yeah, I mean, you know, just uh, shout out to all the guys at, uh, at ESGN, actually, because yeah. uh, I really do honestly feel for them. Um, you know, it's never nice. I've had this experience before of uh, uh, when CGS shut down and, you know, you just mm. you don't even get a phone call. You just literally get an email saying, hey, we don't need you anymore. Brilliant, thanks. Um, so I do feel for these guys. It's not their fault that they've been fired, and I think we should be uh, a little bit more respectful towards these guys. They have, after all, lost their jobs, and some of them have moved many, many miles to do them. So my, my thoughts are with those guys. Um, big shout out to all the guys at ESL. We just had a town hall today, and uh, some great stuff coming out from us again throughout the year. I don't want to bore you with it, um, but you know, just keep sticking with us. And uh, thanks for all the support from everyone over the last couple of years actually with all the stuff that we've been doing Katowice and what have you and hopefully see you all at WCS next week and ESL 1 at the end of June alright good stuff Cody always great having you too man you want to do some shout outs yeah of course uh, shout outs to the Daily Dot esports crew we're awfully small uh, and like I said we're not a, an esports website so the coverage we do is a little bit uh, it's a little bit different but I, I'm really liking it and starting to feel more, more like home uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, Big Clinton. Uh, Clinton and I joined Evil Geniuses about the same time in oh, yeah. 2011, uh, and that's actually so shitty that you can't compete in the international this year. Uh, so beers are on me next time I see you. And then uh, 
uh, thank you all, uh, all three of you, for being entertaining and funny today. Uh, it was a really good show, and I appreciate it. Steven. Yeah, out. same as always. Just gonna do slash tang for cell phones. Just gonna do slash shave for shaving. Check out Phoenix's products. Um, I'm not sure if those headphones are out yet or not, but keep your eye on that. You're still wearing the same sign, are you, man? <laughs> things are awesome, man. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, just to round things out by thanking you guys, obviously. For oh. The show. oh, who else? Also, come visit me. If you're a fan, we can hang out at uh, Home Strike Up. There you go. That's it. There you go. Okay. All right. Cool. That's this weekend if he gets his passport in time. Yeah, my guest will be tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. going into FedEx, so it should be good. I'm going to be, um, I'll be in Germany in like a day or two, so I'll be there like a couple days before the Home Strike Up starts, so I need you guys to come hang out with me so I'm not bored as <laughs> fuck. Where are you staying? Okay. I'll, uh, I'll warn immigration services. Oh boy, the... there's um, either takes or some hotel in the area, I don't know, some oh, okay. bullshit. Cool. <laughs> Alright, have, yeah. have you been Destiny, by the way? Have you been before? You yeah, been twice. twice. Have you? Yeah, once or know. twice? I thought it was yeah. twice. That hotel has bunk beds, right? It's like one of those small European places, the ones closest to uh, takes. I yeah, remember hearing like that. Hostel? It's not or a hostel, it's like a... Uh, like a oh, I thought we were talking between. about horror movies that could happen. Oh, uh, oh my god. Yeah. Saw. Yeah. <laughs> It's fun. There's a good uh, kebab place nearby that apparently stays out open really late. I always hear about that one, too. Yeah, the kebab they... place. Yeah. Can somebody please tell me, what is kebab sauce? What? What? Is it ranch or... What is kebab sauce? There's like a... It's, it's not, like the it's white... Ranch. What is it? Kebab uh, sauce? You're, t you're talking about when you go to a proper Turkish place. Yeah, yes. Oh, Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not called kebab sauce. <laughs> what is it? Well, well, I remember when I went, the Germans there said like, oh, like if you're gonna get a kebab, you have to get it with a kebab sauce. You can't you can't get it or whatever. What the fuck is it? <laughs> oh, you don't want to know, Steve. You don't want to know, man. <laughs> oh, what color goodness. is it? It if it's ranch, it has to it be. Looks, what animal it, does yeah, it, it come from? Yeah, it looks like ranch. Pinky. It's something. I thought, like I thought it looked like pinky. ranch. Okay, it's like yeah. one of those things. Like I don't eat, I won't eat something if it has like a name and I have no idea what it is. Like at McDonald's, like on Big Macs, they have the Mac sauce. What the fuck is Mac sauce? Like I, I don't. Or like on their breakfast stuff, they've got breakfast sauce. Gonna, like it has to have something. It's in the it. orange. I'm gonna put it in the chat for you. There you go. It's, uh, sorry, not in the chat. In it's the, tzatziki. Uh, oh, you're talking about tzatziki. That's a cucumber sauce, dude. It's like a, oh, is that about. what it is? Yeah, it's, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Enlighten yourself, Stephen. Come on. Is it, it's like sour I just cream, did, I just didn't want to shame and, him on the stream. <laughs> well, nobody, nobody called it tzatziki. They, they all just said, "Oh, it's kebab sauce." Anytime you eat kebab, you have to get the kebab sauce. I have no fucking tzatziki idea what it is. Tzatziki is actually Greek, I think. Oh. Is it Greek? Yeah. Oh, right. Whatever. Yeah, it's good though. I love tzatziki. Okay, you guys. Know, uh, one shout out though. Yeah. To a missing member of the family. Oh yeah. Big shout out Richard. to our boy Rich. Comrade. We uh, Richard Abbott. Whenever it's time, you can always got a spot. Got a spot. In the war against. Our two fallen comrades, anything, man. Well, first is Thorin, and now we got Richard, know. man. We, we're gonna have we're to have man. like, we're gonna have to have little tombstones like at the bottom of, of these uh, of the overlay here, man. Oh boy. And, uh, yeah, but the show's not the same without a man. So no, it's not. Best luck. Whenever he's ready, man. Like, if he, like I said, man, if the door's dies, always open here. If he if he ends up getting fucked or whatever, that's two careers killed by unfiltered so far, right? Thor's got his own show now, man. It's fine. No, no, no. Did, you, did you have any of the ESGN guys on here before as well? Uh, Freddy was on Frodo here before. Freddy was on Frodo here. as well? Yeah, he was on this here. It's a death, man. And it's only time before me and Red Eye are done. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, right, yeah. Man. I'm fucking scared now. That's right, dude. Get ready. <laughs> dead but, show is dead. No, man. It's the Grim Reaper. I should call it the <laughs> Grim, Grim Reaper of shows. Speaking of which, there's a category now on Twitch. Which does anybody use that show category? That oh my god, it's a, I forgot who told me that. I think uh, um, Ben told me that. Uh, what should I call it? Uh, Fish sticks told me that. And I'm like, why would I ever use that? Because nobody's nobody is looking at that category at least right now. So. Or maybe you could be the first, and then I could be, be the first. At... It'd be like streaming on Zubu, man. Nothing, nothing, nothing there. Wow. So. wow. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, big thanks to the three of you guys for doing the show. And for those that missed the beginning, the VODs, the first two parts of the VODs are up on YouTube.com slash ChamiMV. At least the first part is. So check it out there. And follow the channel if you enjoy the show. And tomorrow it's going to be Wednesday Night Sprites. Hopefully my voice will be a little bit better. I've just been chomping down on cough drops this whole time, so excuse me if, uh, 
you know, you caught some of my voice. My voice was like dying at that one point. So uh, don't but, forget to buy the t-shirt. Yeah, buy the t-shirts. Support the show. All the new retire. subs. All the new subs today. Big, big thanks to you and and supporting uh, just everything I do. Value Town Deck War is going to be on Thursday. If you like Hearthstone and yeah, hopefully I'll start streaming some more Hearthstone soon. Okay, that's going to be it for Unfiltered. So for Cody Connors, Red Eye, Destiny, and Chan Man V, we will see you next time. Later.